I'm losing my engine. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is a Cactus 1549. Hit birds. We've lost thrust on both engines. We are turning back towards the water. Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel. In the first part of this video, we will debrief an incident to which I advise you to pay close attention because as a future pilot, you can learn a lot from that incident. And secondly, what does this incident have in common with the famous Hudson River landing by Sully Sullenberg and Jeff Skiles? So no messing about and let's get started. Concord Tower, Cessna 117 Tango's here, uh, about nine miles to the southeast, requesting full stop, half hotel. So we have Brian, our pilot in a little Cessna 150 on his last leg of his cross-country flight. Okay, that's not a good sign if your engine RPM suddenly drops for no reason. Uh, Cessna. Right down. 22. Concord Tower, Cessna 117, Tango Sierra. I'm identing. I'm losing my engine. Who says have an engine trouble? Uh, Cessna 117, Tango Sierra. I have, uh, I'm sputtering in and out and losing power. I've pulled carb heat. Everything else is in the green. Looks like my oil pressure has dropped. All right, well, you can proceed direct to the runway uh, 117 Tango Sierra, clear to land, and um, I'm ready for you. Okay, uh, it's coming back and I'm losing it, and I'm over a residential area. I don't have a lot of places here. I have pitched for uh, altitude. Okay, roger that. I have lost four engine power. I have no engine. Uh, Roger, no engine. Uh, we got guys coming to you. I got uh, Charlotte notified and they're coming to you. 117 Tango Sierra. Amazing job so far. Yes, he might have typed in the wrong score code and you can clearly see by his hands how nervous he got. We come to speak about that moment of the video in a minute. So let's continue. Roger, I'm uh, looking for a field here. I'm going to try to drop in. Roger that. Now, my biggest concern when I see videos like this with flight students that have low hours is that they forget the golden rule of flying, aviate, navigate, communicate, and only in that order. Ask yourself the question, how much can the air traffic controller help in this situation? Not much, really. He told him that he could land at his airport and they'll be ready for him once he lands. It's nice to know, but the airport is too far away. Plus, that information starts a thought process that potentially distracts you from the flying part, causing students and even experienced pilots to lose track of their airspeed. That can rapidly drop to stall speed and then you fall out of the sky, especially being at low altitude like Brian was. And if we check the airspeed, it is already pretty low. Next is altitude. You can't maintain it anymore now, but you can reduce the vertical speed by trimming or pitching for best glide. Now in a Cessna 150, without flaps extended, the best glide speed is 60 to 65 knots, which Brian is currently doing, so nicely done. I'm uh, gonna attempt a landing in a field right now. 117 Tango Sierra, Roger. I notified Charlotte they got people sending uh, as soon as they can to you. Now in this section, you can somewhat see that Brian was trimming the aircraft nose up because with no engine power, she would pitch the nose down. So a good move by Brian to relieve the pressure on the yoke. Next, you can see he extended the flaps. Now for three good reasons, to increase the drag to kill altitude, because he was now committed to landing in the field straight ahead of him. And he was clearly too high at that point. And secondly, to safely reduce the airspeed for landing. And by doing so, he has increased the lift and decreased the stall speed. 
So you could say from this moment on, he treated it like any other landing, just without an engine running. I have touched down. Holy. Wow, amazing. What a fantastic little clip. So well executed. Sure, at first he was super nervous and shocked about the situation he was suddenly in. But after a brief moment, he kept his calm, scanned the area for a landing spot, made a decision, notified ATC and never forgot to aviate and he executed it nicely. Now you may say he didn't use the checklist. Correct. But in all fairness, he was at 2,200 feet at the point the engine failed and he safely landed on a field two minutes later with an elevation of 700 feet. That's 1,500 feet to find the correct checklist, analyze the situation and if the engine doesn't restart, find a place to land. I believe at that low altitude, try and find a place to land as quickly and as safely as possible. But if you are at a standard cruising altitude of 5,000 feet and a gliding ratio of eight to one, meaning 5,000 feet times eight equals 40,000 feet, which converts to 6.5 nautical miles, that flown with the best glide speed of 60 knots, you have six and a half minutes before you need to land but six and a half minutes if you fly over dead flat Florida. But Brian flew in North Carolina and they have trees there. So I think he made a good choice bringing her down the way he did. It could have ended much worse. By the way, today's video is brought to you by the Future Pilots Masterclass, the best video online course that sets you up if you want to become a pilot. With 12 chapters, 36 videos, 80 pages of printout material and expert guidance, you'll be fully prepared before signing up for flight school. Start your journey today by clicking the link in the description box below. Now your question. What is that going to do with the Hudson River landing by Sully Sullenberger and Jeff Skiles? Brian didn't land on water, nor did he have passengers on board. I'm going to show you the clip of the movie Sully in the moment they hit the birds and I want you to focus on the facial expression of Sully played by Tom Hanks. Birds. on both engines. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is a Cactus 1549. Hit birds. We've lost thrust on both engines. We are turning back towards the Guardia. In the upper right hand corner, you saw the timer I placed there and it started just after the birds had hit the plane and to the point where Sully said, my aircraft, stating that he is taking over control. And you see that the timer shows 35 seconds. Why is that important? And what does that got to do with Brian's flight? What you see here is the so-called startle or surprise effect. The startle effect refers to a sudden and unexpected event that triggers a strong physiological and psychological response in individuals. When a pilot experiences the startle effect, they often react with a rapid increase in heart rate, a surge of adrenaline and a narrowing of focus. Now this can lead to a temporary loss of cognitive abilities and decision-making capacity potentially hindering the pilot's ability to respond effectively to the situation. If we monitor Tom Hanks' face again during those 30 to 35 seconds, he has that expression of, is this really happening? A level of uncertainty, anxiety, stress, and a brief moment even of helplessness. 
But once the startle effect had been overcome, he regained his focus and dealt with the situation and saved the lives on board by his correct actions. If we look at Brian's video again, the same thing happened. For the first 10 to 20 seconds, he was so startled by the sudden engine loss. Just look at his hands and fingers. They're trying to type in the score code. He even typed in the wrong code initially. It's totally human. Meaning Brian was startled and lost for a moment until he got out of it, regained focus and took action. Quick example. If I ask you now what the score code is for loss of communication, you probably know it on the spot. But if I would ask you whilst we were skydiving together and it's your first time, I am sure you'll get it wrong too because you are startled in that moment and by me asking you that question as we are plummeting towards Earth. I couldn't come up with a better example, I'm sorry. So to sum up, the startle effect can be particularly challenging in the aviation industry because it can result in tunnel vision where the pilot's attention becomes fixated on the startling event, neglecting other critical aspects of flight, and it may impair judgment and lead to delayed or inappropriate responses as we saw in a few seconds of Brian and Sully's video. Training and preparedness are essential for mitigating the startle effect, helping pilots to react more calmly and rationally during unexpected situations. Now, the other effect I mentioned is the surprise effect. Now, surprise is very simply defined as any time expectation does not equate to reality. A classic example, during your IFR training, let's say you're flying manually into IMC. You're straight and level at first, but without you knowing, your plane is suddenly banking to the left, but your body senses that you're still flying straight and level. Your instructor will then tell you to check your instruments, and to your surprise, you realize that you are banking hard to the left, and you immediately know what to do to apply right aileron to counteract and fly straight and level again. Same thing, you are flying a low visibility CAT 3 no decision height approach. You are all set up for an auto landing, but at 150 feet radial altimeter height, one of your system fails and you automatically get downgraded to CAT 2. At the moment it happens, you'll be surprised, but not necessarily startled because you immediately know the action, go around. The startle effect is characterized by an immediate and overwhelming physiological reaction while the surprise effect is more general and can be managed with training and established procedures. Both effects underscore the importance of training and preparedness in aviation to ensure the safety of flights, even in the face of unexpected events. And this wouldn't be a classic Captain Joe video if there weren't any tips for you to take with you. So here are five helpful tips to be better prepared for the startle effect. Tip number one, training and simulation. Regularly practicing emergency procedures and simulated startled scenarios can help you become more accustomed to unexpected events. These drills can help you mitigate the startle effect by making you more mentally prepared for such situations. The classic example, have someone wake you in the middle of the night and then preach the memory items, including moving imaginary switches. <laughs> Little side note, and it will make you cringe. Where do you sit at least once a day for five minutes in silence? <laughs> Correct, on the toilet. So print out your memory items, stick them to the bathroom wall, and just read them over and over and over again until they are deeply embedded in your brain. Tip number two, chair flying. Yes, chair flying is the cheapest and one of the most effective training tools you can take advantage of. Have the checklist on your lab and go through the items step by step and use your imagination as you are flicking switches with your fingers. Pro tip, if you are in flight training, use the rainy days when your aircraft is sitting in the hangar and do some pro chair flying in the actual cockpit. This is a great way to train your muscle memory, knowing where everything is and how far you actually have to reach to get to them within the cockpit. Get your crew partner involved and challenge yourself. I created a whole video just on chair flying in my Future Pilots Masterclass. Still, the link is in the box below. Tip number three, enhance your situational awareness. Knowing the aircraft systems, your route, and the environment around you can help you react more effectively during a startling event. 
a thorough understanding of your aircraft is crucial. For example, as we cross the Atlantic, we get the weather and runway data of each airport in the vicinity that we could use in case of an emergency, just to prepare in case. Tip number four, effective crew communication. Pilots and crew members should maintain clear and concise communication, especially during stressful situations. Sharing information and coordinating actions can make a significant difference in mitigating the startle effect. This refers to the crew resource management skills and knowing your standard operating procedures, hence callouts and actions. And the last one, tip number five, mental preparedness. Developing mental resilience and coping strategies is essential. Techniques like deep breathing, positive self-talk and stress management can help pilots to stay focused and make more rational decisions during startling events. You might have just cringed when I said positive self-talk. However, many studies have shown that people in the moment of high stress often question if they should just give up because they feel too overwhelmed during which their focus and maybe even the will to live decreases for a few seconds. But then they realize there might be a chance, regain hope and fight on. If you practice positive self-talk every day, those moments of hopelessness during high stress become negligible and you are more in control of yourself. So there you have it. Understanding the startle effect in aviation and being prepared can make a world of a difference in critical moments. Remember to train and maintain situation awareness, communicate effectively and prepare yourself mentally for any unexpected challenges that may arise in the cockpit. And because I don't want you to be startled on your first day in flight school, I have prepared a comprehensive video online course for you, which will best prepare you for flight school and whilst you are in training. So if you want to become a pilot, the Future Pilots Masterclass is exactly what you need. Click the link in the box, which will take you to our pre sign up and join our Future Pilot School community, where we host regular Zoom meetings, where you can ask all your questions and get the answers you need. Looking forward to seeing you there. And on that bombshell, here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. Perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best. Your Captain Joe.